Hello and welcome to American Truck Simulator with me, Kevin Sawyer. Hope you guys and girls are all well and enjoying your day. What are you up to? Right, um, you join me here. I'm literally rescuing a co worker. Um, now, this Kenworth here is less than a year old, it's about six and a half months old. And it's developing problems with the gearbox. You can't select any gears with it. It's not going anywhere. Um, because it's less than six, well, less than well, less than a year old. It's still under warranty. So the plan is today is to take this back to the dealership, and they can sort it out. Now it's. He was delivering a load at the time, so what the plan is, I'm going to, you know, initially drop the load off and then take the tractor unit back to, or to a dealer to get them sorted out. Um, the reason I'm driving the Freightliner, that's another thing altogether. I'll jump in um, and fire it up. It just so happens I wasn't far away when this truck broke down. Um, I was literally probably about 50 miles down the road a bit from it. Um, basically the guy that was driving this truck parked it in a petrol station, handed the keys to one of the drivers Oh, sorry, one of the was the petrol station manager, and then went see ya, and he just literally left, abandoned the truck with the keys with the with the manager, and um, I basically initial I got a message from the people who took the contract out. Meet Ellis, by the way, he's the guy that's driving the Kenworth bit that we're towing. Uh, it works out cheaper actually doing this because I spoke to the guy at the recovery service and they said they'd do it for us, um, but they preferred just to tow the, the tractor unit on its own for liability reasons and not drive with the trailer on the back. They will do if they have to. Um, only if they have to um, because it was where it was it was already deemed in a safe place they weren't going to do that um, but I figured to save on cost of them doing that I just said look can we just use the tow hook or the tow booth and then I'll make sure it gets back to them I'm a regular customer of theirs when we do get any problems so they they know me well, so they said, yeah, that's fine. In 0 0.1 miles, turn right. So it just works out more better, rather than having to find another driver that's local, or that's nearby, that hasn't got a load on, um, to pick up the trailer and to take this truck, or the tractor unit, back to, to a dealership. It just worked out win-win situation. As the reason, like I say, of driving this, the guy when we first employed him, he was a bit of well, he, he's a bit strange because literally, because I did the interview and I said to him, right, okay, yeah, da 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 da. Love you, and he, you know, his CV, he, previous references seemed good. He was a young driver, hasn't been driving for long. Um, he's been driving for a year and a half, um, but his references he'd been doing a lot of shunting and trailer movement stuff um, previously, so I thought I'd give him a try. But his qu first question to me was really strange, because he sat there and said to me, well what sort of truck will I be driving? Um, will I be driving the same truck all the time? And I said, well, yes you'll be given a truck. Um, it'll probably be brand new, if not very, not very old. Um, and you know, it was all dependent on 
you progress within the company and you may be given new trucks as and when the old truck wears out or whatever you get given a new truck um, and then he said to me well will it be a Volvo and I said well I can't guarantee a Volvo um, it all depends on what we've got coming in brand new at the time and what we've got spare at the time um, and he sort of like said okay and then so literally a couple of weeks go past and because I'll give him this truck which we're driving in now which is brand new at the time if I look at my, if I show you the mileage it's not done very much it's not done very much at all um, for a truck uh, come on guys move do you want to sit here all day but um, he was like after about two three weeks he started moaning straight away he's just like I just can't get a I can't get along with this Freightliner. He says, you know, I, it's it's difficult to drive. Da 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 da. Keeps them coming up with problems. Da 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 da. And so I said, well, what's the problems? And he said, well, yeah, it's you know, the brakes aren't setting right, and it keeps them losing air. And he come up with a list of long, a long list of problems with it. So I said, fine, right, take it into the garage. I'll pay you for a day off. Take it into the garage, and I want them to have a look at it because it's lit brand new under the warranty. Um, they can have a look at it and see if there's any real problems with it. So he takes it into the garage. The garage inspect it under a warranty inspection, and they say there's nothing wrong with this truck. Absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. So I was like, okay maybe it was just an intermittent fault so I was like okay fine whatever then he just starts keep keep messaging me like I really need a new truck I can't get on with this truck da 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 I want a Volvo I want a Volvo and I said look if I, I'll, I'll make a deal with you if you can go for about six months and then sort of like after six months then become the the top as highest earning truck driver I have for a month week in week out be the highest earning truck driver then I'll, I'll give you a brand new spanking brand new Volvo we'll go into the dealership together and you can take the keys and he said, okay, so another couple of weeks went by. And then that's when basically he sent me a bit of a nasty text saying, da, 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 I can't do what you want me to do because the truck's just been a pain. I can't live with the truck. And so I was like, okay. It's like we're going to have to wait for, stop for a way, start, scale, a way scale, way station. So down here, lots of it. Or up here. This could be interesting. And that's when I get the call from the... Uh, the person that hired us to take the load and where's your driver I'm trying to ring him up and then he's, he sends me a nasty text with lots of expletives and lots of swear words and I, I just then phone him up again and I say look fine if you don't want to be with the company anymore don't be with the company anymore we've had the problem is we had problems with other drivers as well they, they just didn't get along with him they, they, he has wound in a lot of the other more senior truck drivers up not not many people liked him um, from what I can understand while speaking to other people he worked with even the first person that sort of took, went out with him even Georgina, she sort of said, no, I don't like him. Something about him I don't like. And when she says something like that, you think, okay, take it as gospel. Because she's more like...
an open-minded sort of person. Make sure we clear that sign, yeah. Oop, hit the wrong gear. So I said, look, does, where's the keys? Where, if, where's the truck and where, and he said, well, the truck's in a, uh, the park in, uh, in a petrol station and the keys are with the, with the petrol station manager. So I literally had to, it had to get in a truck with someone else that was going that way, um, on another run and then go and pick the truck up and he'd left it in such a mess inside the cab. He hadn't destroyed the truck, but he just left a horrible mess of litter and just all sorts of stuff. So that took me about half hour to clean it out, I'd vacuum clean it all out and everything else. And then I get the ring about the truck being broken from LS here. So it's all happened in one day. In fact, Ellis might get this truck if the Kenworth dealer can't fix this quickly or refuses to fix this quickly. I can't see it being a problem because, like I say, it should be a warranty thing unless Ellis isn't telling me something. And he he's mullered the gearbox up somehow. But like I say, I'm, you know, I'm op open and honest to the drivers, and I say to the drivers, look, just be honest. If if it's driver error, let me know. Okay, we will have words about it. But as long as you learn from your experience, especially if the younger driver hasn't been driving for a while, then you expect these things to happen. Even I make mistakes, as you guys know. Um, But, you know, he, he's been, no, he just literally said to me that the, it just, it started sort of like, wasn't uh, selecting gear initially, it was a bit troublesome, and then even with the, with the clutch it wasn't selecting gear very well, it, every now and again it wouldn't select. He's double D in the clutch and all the stuff you're supposed to do. But it just, and I talk, talking to the record guy, he said, no, there's something wrong with the linkage, the selector link, linkage. It looks like it's been poor, it uh, looks like there's, it's sheared on the, on the connectors. And it looks like it's um, been a bit of a defect within the metal itself. The impurity says, because the metal looks like it's got an impurity in it. So it's that's snapped. So I'd say it wasn't driver error. I'd just say it's obviously a defective part that's made its way through on the assembly line. try and get there because this is this load that this has got on the back is already running late so I phoned the um, the people that's expecting this load that's gonna be a bit late 
because of what's happened with all the all the shenanigans. So it's going to cost us a bit of money, all because of the strut. And just ha just happens I was nearby, luckily enough. If I wasn't nearby then, it would have been whole kettles. A whole different story, I think. the engine brake on this bit I think because I can see it running away. It's probably a bit too close. I can still let the driver back off a bit. There's been a bit of adventurous there, really. It's good to be driving this thing again. I can't understand what his problem was with this truck. It's not a bad truck to drive. Not many people... I reckon it was just because he loved Volvos. And he didn't want to drive a freight front. Well, freight shaker. A lot of people call them freight shakers or freight liners. Um, and some people have a stigma. They say, "I'm on a, I'm in a freight liner. I'm a, I don't want to drive that." But anyway, I digress. But what I'd do is, I think I'll leave it at that. It's been a fairly long run. And a fairly long yabba about dodgy drivers, not dodgy new driver, and dodgy parts that have been installed on the truck. But I hope you guys and girls enjoyed the episode. If you did, um, please feel free to like. Um, if you didn't like it for any reason, again, please feel free to dislike. Leave comments either way, just so then I know how I'm doing and if I need to improve in the future. Um, if you know anyone else that may also enjoy watching this, guys and girls, please feel free to share. It helps me out a lot. I don't mind you sharing. And if you're new to my channel and see future episodes of this or anything else I'm working on, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so then you're aware as soon as I upload a new video. I'll see you in the next one. TTFN.